So yesterday the interesting question was placed to me by our Nityananda Ramachari. That how is it that the Asadev, who is self-realized soul and the incarnation of Godhead, how is it that he is bewildered about bewildered and disappointed? Because such a great personality should be in complete knowledge. And especially Vyasadev, because he's giving knowledge to the whole of human society. So, how is it that he is appearing to be uh, not in full knowledge, dissatisfied? Uh, if you, you can just keep it there. Only you have to, yeah. everyone else can follow the translation. Understand Tamil? Tamil? Kuncham, kuncham, kuncham. English? My voice may not reach so far. <laughs> so, in reply, I gave the example of Arjuna. That Arjuna, he is also a, a pure devotee, eternal associate of the Supreme Lord. But he appeared to be totally bewildered about his duty. He appeared to be like an ordinary conditioned soul. But he was, it's understood that he was put in that condition to effect the Lord speaking of Bhagavad Gita. And the evidence of that is that he immediately understood Bhagavad Gita after Krishna spoke it. There are so many great pundits who are studying Bhagavad Gita, but they find it difficult to actually understand what is the meaning of Srila Prabhupada made Bhagavad Gita as it is, because most interpretations, they are Bhagavad Gita without full or proper understanding. As Krishna told Arjuna, that uh, Bhaktosi me sakha chaiti rahasyam hiyate ruttamam. I am saivayang maya teja yoga prokta puratanaha. Bhaktosi me sakha chaiti rahasyam hiyate ruttamam that I am speaking to you this very ancient knowledge because I'm speaking to you why to you because you're my devotee as well as my very dear friend so that is the qualification to understand Bhagavad Gita as Krishna states in Gita itself Bhakti Amama Mijanati I can be understood by the process of Bhakti not by any other process mm. so Arjuna temporarily appeared to be in Maya but the fact that he understood Bhagavad Gita immediately shows that actually his knowledge was only temporarily covered for a particular purpose. But that also demonstrates the difference between the Supreme Lord and the Jiva. As uh, Krishna states, in, Krishna told Bhagavad Gita, when I told in Bhagavad Gita when Arjuna was surprised, how did you speak to the sun god? Bahuni me vietitani janmani tapacharjuna tani ang veda saravani natvang veta parantapa that you and I, both of us have had many births, I can remember them all, but you cannot. So we can understand that even if one is as perfect a devotee as Arjuna, who is an eternal associate of the Lord, his knowledge will never be equal to that of the Supreme Lord. Arjuna did not remember all his previous births, Krishna did. Uh, we see it's, it's very common in the lives of great Vaishnavas that they, they may appear to be like, in many ways, like ordinary people. Our own Srila Prabhupada appeared to be like a businessman with an interest in bhakti. <laughs> that he, he was an ordinary family man and a devotee also. But later it became manifest that he was uh, a great, great devotee of 
incomparable. We see in the life of Bhakti Thakur that another great Acharya that he appeared in many ways to be like a materialistic person. With uh, having had a, a Western education, I mean an English medium education, which was quite uh, uncommon in those days, he was, uh, he was more inclined towards Christianity, it seemed. But later when he came in contact with the cult of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he began to write such wonderful writings that there's no comparison to the writings of Bhakti Thakur. So no one could write like Bhakti Thakur unless he's on the level of Bhakti Thakur, which means he's very, very, very highly advanced devotee, very special devotee. Such wonderful <laughs> writings with songs and poems and philosophical books and even even he made some novels to to present Krishna consciousness. So uh, one should never consider that a Vaishnav is simply a materialistic person. You should never equate their position with that of an ordinary person. It may appear in his life that he had some previous uh, material attachments, but we should know that that is only circumstantial. Once Srila Prabhupada was asked about this by some of his disciples, that Prabhupada said that uh, in his kindness, Srila Prabhupada once said that all my Western disciples, they are sent by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to help me spread this movement. And the devotee said, but Prabhupada, we were so sinful and ignorant, how, is that, how could that be possible? Prabhupada said that was just incidental. And the, uh, yeah, Prabhupada said to, that when you, when you came to Krishna consciousness, you immediately took it up very seriously, all of you. So that is the proof that actually your real life is one of Krishna consciousness. So it is a general uh, principle that one should not see the past of a Vaishnava if it appears to be non vaishnava if someone says, oh, this is a great Vaishnava, and someone else says, yes, but do you know he used to eat meat and so many things? To uh, consider that, to look at the past of a Vaishnava and, and try to bring him down on that basis is actually very offensive. Everyone in this material world is sinful in the sense that we have rejected Krishna. But whatever one's past may be, if one is engaged in the activities of Krishna consciousness, then he is glorious. One should be very careful in considering the character of Vaishnavas. Even if one sees that a Vaishnava is suffering or sick or any such thing, one shouldn't think that, oh, now he's under the influence of the modes of material nature. Jato deko Vaishnava bebohara duk nischoy janeho taha parananda shuk. In Chaitanya Bhagavad, Vrindavan Dash Thakur warns us that you may see that a Vaishnava appears to be suffering in this material world, but you should know that this is all um, just another manifestation of transcendental bliss. Vishwai Madanda Vaishnava Te Inachine Persons who are blinded by sense gratification they cannot recognize a Vaishnava. Even a Vaishnava himself, it may be in some cases, it, he appears to be uh, himself a materialistic sense enjoyer. There's the well-known story of Pundarik Vidyaniti and Gadadha Pandit. When Mukundadatta brought Gadadha to see Pundarik Vidyaniti, Gadadha was doubtful about Pundarika Vidyaniti. Mukundadatta, another devotee, he brought Gadadha to see Pundarik Vidyanit. And Pundarik was sitting on a very <coughs> nice silk decorated bed, silk, and uh, his hair was nicely combed with scented oil, and so many servants were fanning him. And so Gadadha doubted, how is this uh, Vaishnava? He looks like a great sense enjoyer. So uh, Mukunda, seeing that Gadadha was doubting, he sang one verse from Srimad Bhagavatam, glorifying the merciful nature of Krishna. 
on hearing this, Pundarik Vidyanithi became mad in love of God and started running here and there, shouting, jumping. And this ecstasy continued for a long time. So then Gadadhar understood. Actually, he doesn't look very renowned, but he's certainly a very great man. So this is the real symptom of a Vaishnava, that he's very much attached to Krishna. And although generally we expect that a Vaishnava will be very detached from this material world, uh, he may also use everything in this material world in Krishna's service. Srila Bhaktisiddham Sarasar Thakur introduced that Vaishnavas may live in uh, quite opulent surroundings. One can see his quarters in Calcutta there was nice furniture, nice bed and all these things. But he used these facilities to uh, welcome the aristocratic class of people. And he would preach to them about Krishna consciousness. If one is not attached to anything of this material world, but uses everything in Krishna's service, that is called yukta vairagya. So again, getting back to Vyasadeva, why did Vyasadeva appear to be bewildered? Well, we can uh, understand at least one important point is there, that uh, Vyasadeva was showing that without guidance from Guru, even a very great personality, he may not properly understand everything. Vyasadeva's knowledge was withheld so that he could uh, be instructed by Narada Muni. Narada Muni is also an eternally perfect devotee, but he also at one point appeared to be bewildered about the nature of the absolute truth. And when he was instructed by his guru, by Brahma, then he understood what is the factual position. So this is the uh, system, since time immemorial, that one has to understand Shastra through uh, the via medium of Guru. Guru doesn't mean simply some picture on the wall. <laughs> there, is, there are certain uh, formalities in dealing with Guru that one is expected to serve, and maybe there will be some things like washing feet and this and that. But these formalities in themselves do not constitute the essence of the guru-disciple relationship. Most importantly, one has to hear from guru. Because a guru is Shotriyang Brahmanishtam. He has heard, he himself has heard in the simple succession. And is fixed in that knowledge. So one should go to a guru to get knowledge by the process of hearing. And serving. Unless one serves guru, then uh, that knowledge, he may hear it, but it will not become uh, fixed in the heart. So you see, even such a great personality as Vyasati, who certainly knows uh, everything, but he, he also appeared to be bewildered for some time. But after hearing from Narad, he was able to compile the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the incomparable Shastra. So we can understand suddenly Vyasadeva is not an ordinary person. He is, uh, he is the authority on spiritual knowledge. And all other authorities coming after him simply have to follow Vyasadeva. But even he appeared to be bewildered temporarily. This should be understood. This is, this bewilderment of Vyasadeva is going on under the Leela Shakti or the pastime potency of the Supreme Lord. Vyasadeva is certainly not affected by the modes of material nature. He is not bewildered under the influence of the modes of material nature. Hare Krishna. So there's your question in more detail. Some reply is there. Mm, please. Yes, Bhagavatam is eternal and manifests in different times and places in, in varying forms. Just like the deity is Krishna, Krishna is eternal. 
but the deity uh, is Krishna, but manifests in various forms, which may be slightly different, so in, different then, in different times and places. Hmm. Every cycle, the avatars of God make uh, Vapara, Krishna, Avatar, and then uh, Rana, Avatar, and another Vajra. The same again, the cycle comes in there. <coughs> The same author as again the coming in the Pretty much, yeah. <coughs> Pretty much. There may be some unusual avatars also, but the, the standard ones are there. So there, may be, there may be some avatars which are just manifested unusually, but the, the standard avatars are there. Hmm. <laughs> Mm. You mean there's Brahma's prayers of cre- for creative energy? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Brahma creates every day of his life. Every day he creates. And every day he prays to the Lord for the knowledge and ability to do so. It's not such an ordinary thing to create everything. So every day he... uh, to revive that knowledge, he prays to the Supreme Lord. It appears that uh, on some particular special occasion, he had this vision of Govinda Mahdi Purusha and composed these prayers. Hmm. Any other question? If not, we'll finish and say Hare Krishna. There's 18,000 verses is also only a summary. In the heavenly planets we have Bhagavatam with some lakhs of verses. So, Bhagavatam is there in four verses. That means in three form. Again, the same point is there that uh, Bhagavatam is eternal but appears in certain forms at certain times. Bhagavatam means that knowledge which is in relationship to the Supreme Lord, Bhagavan. So uh, that is uh, spoken in various times, in various places, by various sages. It's all uh, it's all in pursuance of the knowledge given in seed form by Krishna to Brahma. And that uh, Finally, the Asadev, taking from all different sources, compiled this Bhagavatam as we have it now today. Generally, you say that this material, this middle planet is suitable for spiritual elevation. Higher planets are not suitable. It's not that Bhagavatam in the heavenly planets is better than what we have here now. (laughs) It's just that uh, people have more brain power to understand it there. But they may not have the, uh, due to the strong mode of enjoyment, they may not have the, uh, the inclination to take it up very seriously. They don't. In the heavenly planets, they're on a higher level of karmic development. And in the heavenly planets, they're on a higher level of, of karmic enjoyment. But they don't get the same realization as those who are... It's difficult for them to get the same realization as as persons who seriously take up spiritual life on this planet. The mode of enjoyment is so strong there that they uh, they tend to be bewildered by that. Hare Krishna. Another question? I'll make this maybe the last one. Because I'm running out of strength. <laughs> so... Yes, therefore, uh, later generations of Vaishnavas, it's, it's, in general, it's not recommended to, uh, 
that one should show symptoms of love of God because there's so many people have misused this. It's not an ordinary thing to be Pundarik Vidyaniti. He is Vishabhanu Raja, the father of Radharani. So, simply to uh, imitate is not the, not the real thing. <laughs>